this is Caitlin from HeartSpeak. I wanted to go over today with you uh, this template that we created for best friends, partners, um, to create a pet resource guide for your community. So the first thing that you're going to do once you get that link for this resource guide um, is it will bring you to a page similar to this. And if you already have a, a Canva account, it'll allow you to just kind of use the template. It'll already have you logged into Canva. If you don't have an account, it may prompt you to sign up and that's totally fine. It's a free account, um, no, nothing to pay for, nothing to worry about. I do wanna let those of you know who are with a nonprofit organization uh, that there is a Canva for Nonprofits um, program where you can get Canva Pro for free. So go ahead and Google Canva for Nonprofits if you're with a 501c3. I know that doesn't apply to all of us, so for the purposes of this template and also um, this video, we're using um, only the capabilities of a free account. So we built the, the template with that in mind. All the images, all the uh, fonts that we use, everything is um, things that you can use with a free account. So no worries if you do not have a paid account. So once you do that, you're just gonna click on use template and it's gonna open a copy of Canva for you. Um, the first thing that you might wanna do just for your own record keeping is click right up here um, and rename the file, right? So rather than it just being a copy of the best friend's pet resource guide, maybe you're gonna call it your organization's pet resource guide. Um, we're gonna dive right in because I want this to be, to be quick <laughs> but helpful. Um, so a couple key things right off the bat on the front page. You may wanna change the background color or the colors of the document to match your organization's brand. So the way that you would go ahead and do that is click just on the front page and you'll see that the color pops up here in the, the corner of the um, image. So you're, you'll click on that color and you can change it to anything. If you already have a Canva account, maybe you already have your brand colors put in here. Um, but if you don't, that's totally fine. I would recommend, if you can get a hold of it, having your organization's um, brand color code. So that is uh, a code you may have to ask um, you know, someone, someone who is the keeper of that information at your organization. Um, but for instance, for, or, uh, for HeartSpeak, it is um, this specific color code is the color red that we use. Um, so I would go ahead and put that in and you'll see that it changes the background to exactly that color. The next thing that you want to do is customize the logo. So um, depending on the shape of your logo, maybe you'll decide that that actually would be better down here because maybe you have a more, um, a taller logo than the one that I have here as an example. That's totally fine. Uh, the way that you would add your logo is go to uploads here and you'll be able to upload from your computer your own logo. If you already have Canva, um, you may already have these things in, you know, uploaded in here. And so for my purposes, I'm going to go to where we keep all of our logos. And let's just say, um, I want to just show you an example of one with a taller logo. Let's say that I, I needed it to be um, this one. So what you can do is you can pull a logo right into that space and it'll go there. And then you're going to have to do some, um, some moving around to get it to be the right size. Um, and... No worries here, what I'm doing is just undoing the crop that was existing on that um, logo previously. And then you can go back and pull your corners and start to resize it that way. Um, if that starts to feel a little too difficult, especially if they're not similar sized logos, I'm just doing some undos there. What you can do is simply delete this logo and you can pull in the one that you want to use. Just keep in mind that if you pull it, um, into the background, it could snap to the back. See how that just happened? Um, and it wants to be the background image. So in some cases, rather than pulling it over, if you're not gonna place it in a shape, you're just gonna click on it, and that way it'll add to kind of the top layer of the document, and you don't have to worry as much about it snapping to the background. Um, so in this case, the other thing that I want you to do is just kind of drag it around until you start to see these purple guides appear. And those are going to help you center things. And, and these are just small design details that become really important just in terms of what we want people to concentrate on is the content of this guide, right? We don't want them to concentrate on our logo not being centered or just little things that tend to catch and bother um, the eye of the reader. So just keep that kind of stuff in, in mind. Um, so if you do end up with a logo that's a little bit larger or a little bit 
um, tall, you can also switch these two. So maybe you want to put your, your URL up here. So for this example, I'm going to put in HeartSpeaks URL. And maybe I want to call this um, the Mid-Hudson Pet Resource Guide, right? Because that's the area that I live in. And in that case, maybe I want to just resize um, some of these words. Or maybe I want to move resource down here so it's a little bit more um, a little bit more balanced. So again, you have, um, once you open this template, you have all the power in the world <laughs> um, to, to just kind of make it what you want it to be. So feel free to, to go ahead and do that. Um, in this case, I'm just playing around until I get something that feels right. Um, and then you can always grab this, these words, drag them to the center, make sure that Everything is kind of balanced in the way that you want it to be. But again, because you're working on a copy, no worries. You're not altering the template. You're not, um, you're not doing anything that can't be undone is also really important. So um, you can always go back. You can always undo everything. Um, so you, I'm using the undo button at the top of the screen here. Um, you also have undo from your keyboard, right? So for heart speak, uh, I use a Mac, and so that's Command Z on your PC. It might be, I think, Control Z. Um, but either way, I can just keep undoing <laughs> until I feel comfortable. Um, so let's move on. Um, when we get to the table of contents, you also have the ability to swap out photos, any of the photos on the front page, any of these photos um, that you'll see throughout the guide. And they're really just at the beginning and the end because I want you to keep in mind that if someone's going to print this or even if they're going to download it, um, those images are going to add to the file size or they're going to, you know, potentially put strain on the printer. <laughs> um, so we, we kept the photos pretty minimal. But anytime you want to change any of these photos, they're in a frame that is, you know, a triangular frame. Um, but no worries. All you're going to do is go to either your uploads and bring in a photo of your own. And in this case, you do want to drag it um, to get it to kind of snap into the shape that we have here of the frame. Um, if you just clicked on it, it's going to go in like this and then you're going to be stuck in kind of a weird position trying to get it to fit in there until you drag it over. Um, you also have the ability to add more photos if you like. So right now these are just shapes. These are decorative shapes, these triangles. But if you really had a, a strong desire to add a new, uh, photo here, I want to show you how to do that quickly. So you'd go to elements and you're going to look for the elements that are called frames. And they always have this, um, kind of scenic cartoony picture in the back. And that is just a, a signifier for you that you can always add a photo to these. So these are photo frames. So in this case, I'm going to pull in this triangle one, and it's already pretty much the standard shape. And I'm actually just going to use that gray triangle in the back as my um, guide here because it is the same shape, and I, it'll give me these good clean white lines in between. So now I have a frame here, and that means I can pull in a photo if I'd like. Um, maybe I have the perfect photo already. Maybe I want to use a stock photo that Canva already has. Um, so for our purposes, because I'm using a pro account, I'm going to make sure that I'm filtering on free. So I'm showing you only pictures that you can use too. Um, we try to be really s strategic about the photos that we choose. So um, as organizations who are promoting responsible pet ownership and, and trying to reduce lost pets, we are trying to show animals with collars wherever possible. So maybe I want to search specifically for a dog with a collar. Um, and I want to find one that looks maybe not so much like a stock image, maybe a dog that looks representative of our population, right? Um, so in that case, I'm going to decide on this guy. And you might have to play around with photos. Like in this case, he's a little bit Oh, he, he could fit in this space. We can make it work. Um, sometimes when dogs have these wonderful ears, you definitely want to put them in an, the upside down version of the triangle so that we're not, um, we're not cutting off those beautiful ears. Uh, so again, you're, you're doing a lot of experimentation and I want you to feel free to, to do all of that. Uh, the last thing I'll say about this page is table of contents. These are all accurate as of right now, right? So we're going to start with the topic of rehoming pets. It starts on page two. 
so on and so forth. Um, we'll go over some of the changes that you're going to make to this guide, um, but some of them may necessitate that you come back and re redo this page uh, table of contents at the end, right? So you may delete pages, you may add pages. Um, just keep in mind that before you call this done, before you call it quits, go ahead and come back here and make sure that all your page numbers are accurate. And again, just clicking and editing, clicking and editing. Um, when, when you're editing text in Canva, it's very much like a Word document or a Word processor. Um, final note about color again, if you want to change these triangles to your brand colors, same way we changed the color, co uh, the cover color, excuse me. <laughs> so you're just going to go ahead, click on it, click on the, the color box right up here and go, go to town and <laughs> feel free to change whatever, whatever you would like. Um, so I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. So now that we're into kind of the bulk of this, you'll see that a lot of it is um, text-based. Again, we, we use minimal photos. Uh, so you're going to come here, and the big thing to look out for in this guide, we have a lot of pre-written um, text for you that's really kind of universal, uh, leading with best practices from the field. If there are things you want to customize about that, absolutely feel free. If you want to do kind of a quick version of this guide and, and kind of trust that all this copy is reflective of what you want to say, then what I want you to look out for are these um, areas of red text. Wherever you see red text right now in this guide, it means that you need to stop <laughs> and change it. Um, and it's because it's all custom text. You don't want to put this out with it saying, you know, your logo here or, you know, your contact information here. You want to customize every single place where you see red text. So go ahead and click. Um, the first thing that I would do is turn it black so that you are, <laughs> you're um, now writing with black text so it'll all be uniform. And you're going to go ahead and um, change that text to whatever you need it to be. So in this case, I'm going to put in, um, oops, I went back to red text for a moment. And that'll happen sometimes, you know, like even even the best of, uh, <laughs> oop, I didn't want to do effects. Um, even the best of design tools can be a little tweaky. Um, so we're going to go and I'm going to write my organization's phone number here, right? And then I'm going to come down and because we have the email symbol here, I'm just going to come and make sure I put in my organization's email as well. Um, so again, any place you see that red text and the, the beginning of this guide is really about rehoming, right? So there's a lot of universal rehoming um, kind of advice that, that all of our organizations can give. So we have in here bio writing tools and um, tips for matchmaking if people are going to rehome their pets. Um, tips for getting a good photo because we know how important that is, so on, so on and so forth. Um, so we're going to just look out again for here's another area of red text. So if I want to recommend specific resources in the community for um, rehoming, whether it's a Facebook page or our specific link to Nextdoor maybe for our community um, or, or even Craigslist, depending on what uh, resources your organization is using and is comfortable with. So um, again, that's really the, the, the important part of changing this guide. Um, we want to make changes to our brand colors. We want you to put in your logo down here. And again, if you have a really um, square logo then um, or a tall logo where it's going to kind of be outside the bounds of this little strip at the bottom, I want you to just feel really comfortable making decisions like, OK, I'm going to delete that logo. And instead, I'm going to put in some text with our URL. Um, and so you'll see I just deleted that logo. I'm going to come to text. You may already, I, these are, you know, our fonts and our kind of guidelines that we use here, but you can come add whatever text that you want. Um, I'm going to add it. I'm just going to type our organization's URL instead, right? Because maybe our logo doesn't fit well there. And I'm just going to drag it align it and I can move on. And that is something that you're going to have to do on every page. I mean, it's the one um, the one kind of piece of work that you're definitely going to have to to undertake in this uh, project. But it's pretty quick and easy. And what you can do is you can, um, so I'm clicking on that and I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm clicking on the shape and I'm clicking on the page number and I can now copy 
And if I wanted to, I could come to every page and I could copy and paste that and and just, you know, delete this one that's already here and drag this on top. And yes, you're going to have to redo your page numbers and all that good stuff. Um, but if you get in a bind and you want an easy way to, to change this on every page, go ahead and use those copy and paste um, tools to your advantage. So the last thing that I want to say about changing text is once we get into these uh, chapters on medical resources, behavior resources, this is really like your phone book that you're putting out, your resource book that you're putting out into the community with specific information about your um, resources, your local resources. So you want to be able to customize all of this. So we want to know what are the low cost um, vaccines and veterinary services in your specific community. So you're going to come to these areas, you're going to, you can highlight and delete and just start all over again. You can go line by line and, and retype um, in this same kind of format. We just gave you these examples. Um, so again, this can become whatever it is that you want to do um, and whatever you want to see here. And we do have some notes for guidance on, on at the beginning so that you kind of get a feel for this. When there are um, national organizations, so in this case, financial assistance for medical funding, um, these organizations, this information is all accurate as of October 2020, um, so you shouldn't have to change any of this. But let's say you get to this page where every time we have a national resource list like this, we've added a local resource page so that you, you know, if there are local foundations, local organizations that can help people with these things, that you're also pointing people in that direction. Um, if, let's say, in your community, there isn't financial assistance or funding for medical resources, you have your low-cost clinics and things like that, but there's nobody really providing financial assistance, that's totally fine. I want you to navigate to these this kind of sub-menu that pops up at the top of every page, right? So every page has this little menu at the top, and I want you to just delete it. So hit that trash can, it's gone. Realize now, though, that we're going from page 13 to page 15. So this is one of those places where maybe you want to make a note for yourself of, okay, we're starting at page 13. <laughs> I need to re renumber the pages going forward. Um, just, just keep track of those kinds of things because it's a small but significant item when someone's trying to navigate their way through this, um, this pretty hefty guide. Uh, if you delete a page by accident, just use that undo button. If you um, have so many resources, like let's say you have you fill this page and you have another um, need for another page of resources, just hit duplicate page and edit and customize this page whatever way you would like. Same problem. You now know that you're on page 15 instead of 14. No worries. Just make a note for yourself and go back at the end and make sure that you correct those things. So really, that's the bulk of the rest of this guide. Um, it that You'll see that it's very much in this vein of national resources, local resources, national resources, local resources, with um, on specific topics, some really important kind of universal information. Again, feel free to customize that information as it fits your community, but we tried to make this pretty plug and play so that you have to do the least amount of work possible. Um, the last thing that I want to show you is once we get to the end here, um, you know, look for those places with red text, replace it with customized information. And then this quick, quick reference contact sheet at the end is really important. Um, so I want you to make sure that you put in your organization's information all on this page, because if all else fails, um, we want people to be coming to us and asking us, um, specific questions if they can't find it in this guide. So we want to make that really easy for them. And finally, we have an acknowledgments page, um, which, you know, really just gives credit to the inspiration for this guide, um, give, gives credit to HeartSpeak and to Best Friends for providing the template. Um, you're free to duplicate this page, and maybe you have your own acknowledgments you want to make for um, partners in the community or, or anything like that. Go to town. Feel free to, to edit this up as much as you want. We just ask that you keep the original um, one in place so that there is a bit of credit given to, um, you know, those original organizations who made this possible. And that is it. So um, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to HeartSpeak. Again, this is Caitlin, and I'm the director of operations. I designed this guide and use Canva pretty much on a regular 
day-to-day basis. So if you have any questions at all, just reach out to us at info at heartspeak.org and we're happy to help. Thanks so much.